we should begin at the beginning, right? That's what this week's Torah portion is. That's what this fellowship is very much about. It's about prayer. It's about unity. It's about brotherhood. It's about it's about family, and it's about the Torah. And uh, and this week's Torah portion was the book of Bereshit in the beginning, and that's where I think we need to begin Bereshit Genesis this Shabbat. That's what we read, and as we all know, uh, we usually read. This verse, the first verse of the Bible, we read it, Bereshit, bara Elohim et beta arts. In the beginning, Elohim, in the beginning, Hashem, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And, uh, and that's the way we read it, and that's the normative way to read it, and that's true. But as you know, in this fellowship, we like to dig a little bit deeper into some sort of, some of the, the mystical and deeper understandings of things. And Rav Biederman shared a little bit of a different way of reading the, this verse that I think is the only way to start this fellowship. He says, Bereshit, in the beginning, in the beginning, let's start here, right? Let's start with this. The first thing we need to say, the first thing we need to remember, the first thing we need to know is, Bara Elohim et HaShemayim et Hashem created the heavens and the earth, right? You, you follow Bereshit in the beginning, that's what we need to know. God created the heavens and the earth. That is, let's just remember that. He is running the show. Nothing happens without Hashem's direction. Nothing. While we are, of of course, you know, we need to learn from what's happened on a practical level. Some people think that this type of talk is disempowering. It just makes us stop trying. No, it's the opposite. It gives us the sober, dispassionate ability to look at the world the way it is and to learn from it, but to understand at the very same time that Hashem is running the show. So we need to learn what's happened on a practical, military, strategic policy level. Uh, but uh, but let's not forget that what we're going through is what we need to go through right now. Hashem's running the show, and we're on our way towards redemption right now. So let's not forget, right, that when a man beats a dog with a stick, the dog bites at the stick, right? Hamas, the Hezbollah, Iran, Syria, Russia, America, all of these countries, these nations, these superpowers, in their arrogance, they really believe that they're making the calls that the power is in their hands, and they feel so powerful. But really, right, Mishle, the Proverbs, the, tell us, Kemaim, like water streams in the king's heart, in Hashem's hands. Like streams of water is the king's heart in Hashem's hands. He turns it where he desires. Right? They are merely sticks in Hashem's hands. They're puppets in the hands of the God of Israel. All of this is being orchestrated for our benefit and for our growth to bring us to the place we need to be to bring redemption, not only for ourselves, but for the entire world. So Rav Biederman, you know, reminds us from Psalm 148. He says, Eshu barad, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy winds that executes his command. Ruach se'ara osed these stormy winds, these hurricanes, feel like a, a category five hurricane. It is the, it is executing Hashem's command. All of the insanity and the volatility and the unpredictability. It feels like we're in the middle of a storm and of a hurricane. And all of this is under Hashem's command. Because there is something about all of this that we need to be enduring to bring out from within us. To create us into the people that we need to be in order to fix the world and to heal humanity. And ultimately to bring Mashiach. And, uh, and you know, I, I want to read to you a little bit about what the, the sages have said about the times we're in now, Yomot HaMashiach, but not just yet. We'll get there in a moment. So R Rabbi Berman, remember Rabbi Avi Berman? So he says, uh, uh, he quotes a verse from Isaiah in the name of Rav Drukman that just nailed it, right? He says, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, Et Sarah Yaakov umimena yivasheah. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob. And from it he shall be saved. And my friends, notice here, he doesn't say it's a time of trouble for Jacob and afterwards he'll be saved. It says, Mimena, from it, meaning from within the trouble itself, because of the trouble itself, that will be our salvation. And what, what could come from this degree of darkness? Right? What could come from it? And the answer is that from such an unprecedented, deprivated darkness, will come an equal and exactly opposite degree of light. A light is so beautiful that we can't even imagine it in our current state. Our sages teach us that the light that will come from this will be so intense, so blinding, that only if you've spent your whole life 
building up your faith and internalizing your trust in Hashem and performing acts of charity and loving kindness to the degree that you've done that, you'll be able to receive it. Because the sages say the light of redemption will warm the righteous and burn the evil. Right? The same light. And on some level, our whole lives here, the definitely the whole fellowship has been practiced for building those vessels of faith and trust that we need right now. Are we going to be able to maintain a degree of calmness right in the heart of this storm? And I'm not talking about a calmness of, 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 uh, of sort of surrender or hopelessness either. No, a calmness that comes with trust and faith that the whole world around us can be going up in flames, but our faith is in Hashem. And so Rav Shlomo has pointed out that the third verse in the Torah, this week's Torah portion, it can be read a little bit differently. And it will tell us what our job is here, what this whole war is all about. Now, usually we read it, Vayomer Elohim Yehi Or, Vayehi Or. Right? And Hashem said, let there be light, and there was light. But then here's how Rav Shlomo said it. He said, Vayomer. It's like a directive to the Jewish people. Hashem is saying, Vayomer, you shall say, Elohim. The name of God. We shall call out in the name of God. And then, and then, Vayahi Or. Then there will be light. That's what the world is waiting for. That's what the world has always been waiting, waiting for. And the great commentator Rashi asks why the Torah begins with the creation story. Perhaps it should have started with the first commandment. We've spoken about this before. And he answers his own question by saying that in the end of days, the nations will come against us and claim that the land of Israel does not belong to us. And we're to point to these very words. We point to the Torah and we say, God, the God of Israel created the entire world and he gave us the land of Israel. And that is our right to the land. Proclaiming the name of Hashem. That's the light. Fighting with hearts of faith and trust in Hashem. The hearts of, of the Lion of Judah. That is what's being awoken right now. I see it. I see it every day. Uh, the, the line of Judah is being awoken and the forces of darkness do not stand a chance. That's the light, right? They fight with chariots and horses, but we fight with the name of Hashem. We're in the midst of a time of tremendous, extraordinary refinement, right? Since the Garden of Eden, right? Evil and good and light and darkness have been mixed and confused. And as we approach the garden again, that light and that darkness is being refined out and clarified and sifted. And the evil that we're staring in the eye is Amalek. It's no different than Nazi ideology. Zero difference. Tab of the show. So the uh, that here, this is a picture of Haj Amin al-Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, and Hitler. There was a Muslim unit of the SS before Israel was founded. This isn't political. It's not about land. It's not about settlements. Watch BBC, CNN. It's about the settlements. They'll say, don't believe it, right? Was the PLO founded in 1964, the Palestinian Liberation Organization founded in 1964 to liberate the settlements of 1967 that didn't even exist yet? Were the massacres and the pogroms of, in Hebron in 1929 due to the state of Israel of 1948 that didn't even exist yet? This is about pure, unadulterated, genocidal hatred of the Jew, which transcends logic and reason, at least logic and reason that we can understand. It's from the deepest part of the soul, and that's why it needs to be thoroughly eradicated, leaving not even a trace behind. That's the mistake that Saul made, that he didn't eviscerate and kill Agag because he listened to his men and he didn't take responsibility for that. We can't make that mistake right now. We can't tiptoe around Gaza. We need to go in with the wrath of God. And believe it or not, you know, in the face of this most evil, sick, sadistic genocide, there are massive protests around the world in support of Hamas. Here's just one example, just one, I'm not going to go through all of them, of a protest in London. London! Okay, that's what you're looking at. This is days, days after the horrific murder, rape, torture, burning of babies with sadistic glee. And these people all over the world, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions are doing this, right? All those who defend Hamas, 
all those who rationalize or justify their genocide, all those who morally equivocate and call Israel's you know, lack of response thus far, already they're calling it disproportionate because we shut off their electricity and their water. We need to be providing water and electricity to the Nazis that are seeking to wipe us off. It's so insane. These people are casting their own lot and attribute for attribute, they will pay the price of their moral blindness and their evil and their duplicity. And it's never been more clear what is light and what is darkness. And for those that are too morally corrupt and spiritually sick to see it, well, their blood is on their own heads. And if you have any fear in your heart right now, it should be for them, right? Because they are making their own beds. Because as far as, as fear is concerned, that is the real war right now. This is becoming increasingly clear to me every day that goes by about what's happening in my own heart. This is not a war against Hamas. This is a war against doubt. This is a war against fear. This is a war. This war, it's, it's an inside game. It's an inside game. And the real battlefield is in our hearts, not only as individuals, but as a nation. And when we win that inside game, when we put our faith and our trust in the God of Israel, then victory in the outside, that will just follow. Because if we saw things clearly, if we could calm our hearts and our minds and zoom out, we would see that Hashem has a perfect track record in protecting his people. And the proof is we're here right now. I'm talking right now. This fellowship is happening. We've been ingathered from the exiles and our ancient language has been revived and the words of the prophets have been revived and here we are. Hashem has a perfect track record. We haven't endured thousands of years of exile and persecution just to call it a day right now. That's ridiculous. So Rav Manus Friedman shares a beautiful idea from the shortest of all Psalms, Psalm 117. He says, Adonai kol goyim kol ki gavar Oh, praise the Lord. All you nations, praise him, all you peoples, for his loving kindness is great towards us, and the truth of Hashem endures forever. Hallelujah. Right? All the nations, this is what Ravmanah says, all the nations will praise Hashem because of the chesed, the loving kindness Hashem does for his people. So why are the nations praising Hashem because of the loving kindness he does for us? Because they know even more than we do, they know more than anyone what they plan to do to us, and they know how Hashem saved us. They know about the great kindnesses. Hashem saves us a lot more than we do. Just one small example. Last night, there were tens of armed terrorists off the beach in Naharia, approaching the beach. And here's what happened when Hashem introduced them to the Israeli Navy. <laughs> Just imagine if they had made it to Nahari. You know, for every single one of the Shabbat, Simchat Torah mornings, the genocide that just happened, there are thousands that are planned and there are thousands that are foiled. And Hashem has constantly been protecting us. And the other day, you know, I led davening, I led prayers, and I just wept. There's maybe a hundred guys that I was leading in prayer. And I was only doing it because, of course, I, I lead prayers because my father passed away. And I was actually thinking perhaps he passed away at that moment to force me to lead the congregation in prayers and put myself out there like that because it was out of my hands. I just wept. And it was painful and it was vulnerable and it was unusual. And it isn't common for the leader of the service to uncontrollably weep through prayers. But I did. And I had a moment, I was like, I should step down. I should let someone switch me out. But I said, no, 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 this is, this is real. And I didn't step down and I didn't have someone switch me out because I realized that is exactly what the nation of Israel needs to do. We need to shatter our hearts. We need to allow our hearts to be shattered. We need to shatter them before Hashem and offer him up the pieces. You know, if anything will shatter our cynicism and our skepticism and our hearts of stone, it's this. And so I just let the tears flow and we're all letting the tears flow. And it's not weakness. They're tears of strength and they're tears of faith and of conviction and of rage and pain at the evil that is perpetrated against our people. Innocent, innocent. The innocence is beyond babies, little children, the videos. You know, I, I didn't want my family. I don't I'm conflicted about whether we even, should even watch these videos, but I watched more of them than perhaps I should have because I needed to see 
that evil. I needed to confront it. I needed to face it because I, when I'm going out to war, I need to be ready on an emotional, spiritual level and know the darkness and the evil that I'm fighting. And that's strength. That's strength. And we need to let let the pain out and let the strength in. And uh, And Hashem is with us and he will bring us to salvation. I'll tell you that much.